I think it was the most successful garden I've ever had. And I was really pleased. We did a lot of work. Some things didn't work. This bed ended up being mostly tomatoes. And as you can see, the cherry tomatoes are going strong. Everything else has sort of slowed down. There's another <laughs> spaghetti squash that's still going. Maybe a cucumber somewhere back in here. Often when I find them back in here, they're huge. This was the really where the, most of the squash where I've pulled a lot of it out. As you can see, there's a pumpkin. Another pumpkin. There's a patty pan back there. They did very well. I don't know what to do with them. I have a lot I need to process. This is the part of gardening I, in the past where I have stopped short or come up short. It's the preserving. It's a lot of work, yes, but I'm going to do it this year. Look at this. This is a cucumber. That's ridiculous. So these huge ones are going to be turned into cucumber lime water today. The zucchini, and I've got to go down and pick some more because I know there are more. Um, these are all going to get uh, sliced and made into zucchini chips. Got a few cucumbers. I'm just going to leave those little ones. These will go to chips. And I've been preserving eggs by making noodles, but I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> I've got quite a, got a dozen eggs preserved that way. Um, but I'm going to ferment some cherry tomatoes. Aren't they lovely? I've got a lot of those. They're just now coming on. Oh! I'm going to have to rewash that one. Hmm? And right now I'm making breakfast. It's way past breakfast time, but I'm making breakfast. So, let me show you what's going on outside while this is going on inside. Having vowed to preserve everything we grew, August was a really, really busy month. And I tried several different ways of preserving. And I thought fermenting would be the easiest. So I did some fermenting, but I also did uh, uh, dehydrating. A lot of dehydrating. We fried up some of these, but a lot of this got chopped up and dehydrated. I'll use it in soups. Then, of course, the easiest way to preserve food is to grow food that preserves itself. These just need to sit out for a couple of weeks till they age, and now they're stored in the Back basement. Back outside, because it's so hot. I don't want to uh, cook inside, but how well, sanitary it is. So I um, ran the tomatoes through the blender, and then I cooked them down a little bit more. It's not super thick, but it's good enough. And I'm going to hot water bathe, bathe them. So I have four pints in there. I think that's about all I'll need. And four lids. And I'm bringing it to a boil. That'll sanitize and warm the jar so that the hot salsa doesn't crack it. That's what they say anyway. And we just wait a little bit longer. So I have five quarts. <clears throat> in the cooker with a low boil and they'll stay there for a half an hour and I showed you the uh, you know just putting the jars in the water I took them out one at a time dumped the water back in the pot and then came over here and had a funnel this was really handy put the funnel in and a ladle and ladled it in see I have I have more. I could have done another pint, but I'm not going to. I'm running out of jars. We'll just put that in the refrigerator. Tomato sauce, salsa, and pickles are what I was able to do with the hot water bath method. So, of course, you have to peel the tomatoes. So, this looked like a really and is the easiest way to preserve. By fermenting. So now I'm going to do these fermented tomatoes. 
and this looks really easy. You just need a nice clean jar. I'm going to use pickling salt because it doesn't have iodine in it. And just put one tablespoon in each of your vessels. You know, it just has to be food safe. Add some water to each jar. This is not tap water. It's processed water, distilled or something like that. That's what you want to use. No chlorine. Just put the tomatoes in. I'm going to put the... Some don't look so good. Why are so many squishlings now? now? You won't put a lot in there because you don't want them floating. So you don't push them down just a little bit without squashing them. And then add more water. They look beautiful, don't they? Then you just sit them on your counter for a week, and then you burp them. You open the lid every day, let the gases uh, escape, and then close back up again, and wait. All right, here's what it looks like now. And it, I guess it keeps bubbling out. There's salt all over the sides. This is not something I don't, I don't think this is right. <laughs> anyway. I won't be fermenting anymore. All of them look like this. Some of them look worse. But surely that can't be the way it's supposed to be. I'll dry them instead. Okay, it's loaded. I fibbed. I had enough room for the last of the tomatoes. Aren't they beautiful? They're not all 100% ripe on the vine. I'm experimenting with semi-ripe and green ones. Because we'll be doing lots of green ones later. We there I go with that we again. And then these are pretty well packed because they're going to shrivel up. I have the dehydrator sitting outside because it's you know puts out a lot of heat. So I'm going to take it out there and start it, and it'll go all day. And they are really delicious. These these little tomatoes. They're little uh, cherry tomatoes. Oh, they're awesome when they They're just good to eat just like that. So I'm going to do some more. I have more, a few more tomatoes left. I have a lot of zucchini. The problem with the zucchini is, you see, I made it too small. It falls through the holes <laughs> when it dries. So... I'm just going to do a whole tray of zucchini, so when they mush together, it won't matter. These are almost dry, and I'll put them in glass jars and use them for pizzas, or just throw them in soup this winter. Okay, I got the cucumber, that big one cut up. I'm going to have to strain it just because of... I could cut the seeds out, but there's juice in that. So I'm going to put it in the blender and add a little bit of water and blend it up. Here's one of the smaller ones. <clears throat> that looks about the right color. This one is kind of white. And that was all the pulp. It's like mashed potatoes, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm going to just run this through the sieve as well. Some pulp is fine, you know, but I want it to be all pulp. When that drains, we'll add the lime juice. We have that much cucumber juice. I'm going to add it to here. 
I had some water in there. And I'm going to add a half a cup of lime juice. Now, to make limeade, it says use a whole cup of juice. That's a quarter cup. And a whole cup of sugar. So I'm going to use half of that for the lime. Sugar and water. And we'll do sugar to taste. Just gonna, you know, I've got it in the refrigerator to get cold. But it's really tasty. So here's all the good kind. <laughs> After curing outside, which is what I meant, for a couple weeks, then I bring them down here. Look, I have lots of pumpkins <laughs> and lots of spaghetti squash. I'm going to cook a couple today. I have some eggs that I'm going to start doing um, pickled eggs. And speaking of pickles, there's my pickles and salsa and tomatoey things. There's uh, regular white potatoes down in there. And sweet potatoes stacked around. I have some sugar and baking supplies. Oh, it's not just October, it's late October. So now, <laughs> time to put everything to bed. We have some cardboard laid out. And we're starting to dump leaves and grass on the gardens, all of them. Some of them are still going. There's some peppers in that one and celery. And there's lots of tomatoes left over here. Look, I have a lot of tomatoes. And then, of course, we started the winter garden. 